All right, I'm going to answer the biggest why when we are doing partial fractions. Take a look. And that's the case when we are dealing with a big fraction like this, when we have a repeating factor on the bottom, and let's take a look at x plus 2 squared. Break this apart. Okay, yes, we see the x plus 2 squared right here for this little fraction already. But why do we also need to put down this x plus 2 to the first power right here? And as I said, this right here is perhaps the biggest why when we are doing partial fractions. And before I answer this question, let me just go over the setup with you guys when we are doing partial fractions. Take a look. So here is the first case. Before anything though, I should also mention that in fact the top doesn't matter as long as the degree on the top is less than the degree on the bottom. So this could have been 3x minus 11 or 2x minus 217. The setup will still be the same as long as the degree is strictly less than the degree on the bottom. The degree here is 1, the degree here is 1 plus 2, which is 3. So the setup will be like this. And let's just use the same numerator, 2x plus 1. So if we take a look at 2x plus 1 over, if we just have x plus 1 times x plus 2. This is nice. This is everybody's favorite because we can just break them apart with x plus 1 right here. And then the second fraction, we get x plus 2. Notice that they are just both linear, meaning degree 1, so the top will be just constants because you always want to make sure when you set up, the degree on the top is 1 less than the degree on the bottom. Right? So degree here is 1, that means the top right here is degree 0, meaning just constants. And then we can talk about how to get the A and B by using the cover method in another video, but this is the setup first. When we have two different factors and they are both linear. Now let's take a look at the second one. What if we have a quadratic, let's say 2x plus 1 on the top over x plus 1, but this is x squared plus 2. This right here is a quadratic. It's kind of similar to this because technically this is also quadratic. But the thing is that this right here is actually a irreducible quadratic, meaning that we cannot factor this anymore with real numbers. So we just have to deal with this right here. But technically this right here is what? Means x plus 2 times x plus 2. This right here is a repeating factor. So I'll just say this is a repeating factor. And uh, this right here, we can look at it as x plus 2 times x plus 2. So when you have a repeating factor like this, you have a power on the outside of the parentheses and then you will have to do things like that. But let's talk about them later. How do we take care of an irreducible quadratic? Have a look. Again, the first fraction will have x plus 1 on the bottom, and then for the second fraction, we'll just use this. That's x squared plus 2. On the top here, it will just be a constant, but for this right here, because it's a quadratic on the bottom, and the top has to be one degree less than the bottom, so we will have to set up a linear and you have to make sure you put on the general form, so we get bx plus c. Done. And of course, to solve for abc, uh, it's going to take some time, but maybe another video. All right, number three. Check this out. I will still give you a quadratic, but this one. Let's say we have 2x plus 1 over x plus 1 here, and here I will just multiply it with x squared. This is also quadratic. But this quadratic is similar than this because this right here means what? x times x, all right? Okay, let's use the same strategy than how we set this up earlier. I'm going to first write down the x plus 1 here with just a constant on the top. But for this one, okay, I will just keep it as how it is, which is x squared. But the top will be a linear, meaning bx plus c. But do we recognize what we can do with this part? See, the bottom here has just one term, so that we can actually just split the fraction and we will get, okay, still a over x plus 1, but for the second part, we can just write this as bx over x squared first, and then c over x squared. And what can we do right here? Yes, we can cancel, cancel, so ladies and gentlemen, we will end up with a 
over x plus 1 and then plus b over x and then plus c over x squared. As you can see, right here we have x squared and please look at this x squared as x times x. So you can put the square on outside. It's a repeating factor. And when we set this up, yes, we will have the x squared here, but we also need x to the first power here. I call this build up the power. What it means is that you start with x to the first power, and then you build up, you just keep adding 1 until you reach this power. Imagine if you have, let's say, let's say we have 2x plus 1 over still x plus 1, but let's say we have x to the fourth power. You don't need to do this step every single time. Just remember, build up the power and set it up correctly. Firstly, we will have x plus 1, and then the top will be a constant, let's say a. Okay, x to the fourth power, so here we go. Start with x to the first power, and then we just keep going, x squared, and then x to the third power, and then x to the fourth power. This right here is linear, so that means the top will be a constant, b, and then the top will stay the same time. So another constant, another constant, another constant. All right? So that's why we do that. But of course, you will be thinking that this is x squared. This is just x. They, they might be different. Don't worry, I got you. This is how you can explain this right here. So have a look. We still want to answer this expression. What we can do is just do some substitution. And let's just say that t. And I will just say that t equal to this so that we will end up with a similar form. So I'll just say t equals x plus 2. And then we can do a few things, right? Because for example, we can say this is the same as saying x is equal to t minus 2. And then we can say x plus 1. Just add 1 on both sides. So x plus 1 will be t minus 1. And then we also need a top, which is 2x plus 1. Okay, let's do this in our head. So this will be 2 times t, which is 2t. And then 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. And then plus 1 is minus 3. Okay, so we can look at this expression as what? The top is 2t minus 3. So let's write that down. And then over x plus 1 is that t minus 1. And then the x plus 2 is t. Aha, so we have the t squared. And now per our whole discussion earlier, this right here would just be what? t minus 1, even though we have the plus 1, but again, it's the form, it's not about the number. This right here is t minus 1. It's linear, the top will be a constant. And likewise, this right here will be, okay, build up the power, t to the first, and then t to the second. The top will just be a constant, likewise the top will be a constant. We're all done, huh? And of course, in the end, we can set this back just to match it. So ladies and gentlemen, a over t minus 1 is x plus 1. So we can put that down. And then b, and then t is x plus 2. And of course, lastly, we have that c over x plus 2, and then square. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the reason why that we must have this term right here. Hopefully this video helps for more uh, tutorials. For more tutorials, for more tutorials, 